Hi, I'm William. I'm the author of a novella called Fumes, and I'm glad you found your way back to my channel. I mostly talk about books here, writing too, but mostly books. All year, every now and then, I've been running polls on my Instagram account, asking you what your favorite read of the year so far has been. In this video, I'll be going over all of the books that got more than just a couple of votes in all, I got over 700 responses. I think 738 in total. I'll have to double check that. Yeah, 738. And there were quite a few surprises on the list. These are the ones I own physical copies of. And there are a lot of books on the list that I haven't read before. Books that I've had recommended to me quite a bit, but ones that I'll need to be adding to my list here in the near future. I'm gonna breeze through a lot of the books that didn't get as many votes and then focus in on the top 10. Most of these are classics and serious literature, but there's a variety in here. A couple of honorable mentions that stood out to me that I haven't read yet, so I can't tell you much about, are The Shadow of the Wind and Stoner by John Williams. Both of those novels got a decent amount of votes, but not enough to push them into the top 10 and I will for sure be checking them out. If I like either of them, there will be a video dedicated to them on this channel. Infinite Jest also got a decent amount of votes. I've tried reading Infinite Jest three separate times and it's very well written. I don't think it has any flaw other than that it's super long and I just haven't been in the right place in life to enjoy it well enough to get all the way through. Maybe I'll try it again at some point in the near future, but the furthest I've ever made it into the novel was I think the 392 page mark. The Return of the King and The Hobbit were among the honorable mentions as well. I don't think I need to say too much more about these two. Their reputation precedes them. I was glad to see Empire of the Summer Moon make the list. This is a nonfiction book about the Comanches and it completely changed the way I saw the United States. I didn't know much about the westward expansion of the American Empire through the Southwest portion of the United States, and this completely opened my eyes. You will learn a ton if you read this book, especially if you don't know too much about that time period in American history. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte received some votes as well. This is a dark novel that I enjoyed quite a bit. I was assigned it for class and I read it cover to cover, which is saying something because I did not always do that for everything I was assigned in college. If you're looking for a classic to read, this is among my top recommendations. You'll know if it's your thing within the first couple of chapters, you could read them in a bookstore before purchasing the book or just find a preview before you purchase the novel. I have nothing but good things to say about this one. There were a couple of votes for The Catcher in the Rye. This is one of the most iconic coming of age stories set in America. The main character is going through quite a bit internally. I found this novel to be pretty funny. I've read it twice, I think. Yeah, only twice, but it's really good. It was good enough for me to reread. So if you haven't checked this one out yet, add it to your list. The Stranger by Camus made the list. And I think that might partially be because I posted about this novel between a couple of the times I was polling people. So I'm sure that that had an impact, but also it's just a really well-known classic book. This is a very surreal, absurd novel about a character whose mother dies at the beginning of the story, which, makes him feel very detached from everything that's going on around him. The philosophy in this book is one of the highlights. And there's a strong plot. It's super short, so you could read it in a day or in a weekend if you wanted to. I enjoyed this quite a bit. It's one of the best short classics I've ever read in my life. A handful of Hemingway novels were on the list, but The Sun Also Rises was actually the only one that got multiple votes, which kind of surprised me. I love this one. It's pretty short. The cast of characters... They're all going through a lot, but together they have great chemistry and the story is very dialogue heavy. It's told in the first person, so you're getting a very clear vantage on what's going on, but in, in classic Hemingway style, it's very spare, so you're able to read between the lines. And I really like that approach in general. It keeps me more engaged with stories. If that's your thing, check this one out. The story's set in Spain, and there's a lot of action to do with bullfighting. I enjoyed those sequences quite a bit. We're almost done with the honorable mentions, I promise. A couple of Toni Morrison novels made the cut. 
The Bluest Eye, which is her first novel and among my favorites, at least of the ones that I've read by her. It's about a young black girl who's becoming very aware of her appearance and in some ways struggling with it. And the central theme to me of the novel was conformity. The prose is brilliant. The story is very taut. It's not that long. Definitely give this one a try if you haven't read anything by Toni Morrison. I think this is one of the best places to start, especially considering that it's her first. There were two votes for Beloved as well. This is Toni Morrison's magnum opus. I don't consider it to be among my favorites by her. Sula is my favorite novel by Toni Morrison, but I think this is the greatest. If you haven't read Beloved, you really owe it to yourself. This novel has influenced so many that have come after it. There's a bit of magical realism in it, but it's an excellent way of deepening our understanding of the characters and it really propels the drama forward. I've read it a couple of times. Originally, I was assigned it for class and then I read it on my own a few years after school when I had more time to enjoy it more thoroughly. One Cormac McCarthy novel made the top 10, but two that didn't were The Crossing and Sutri. Sutri is the novel that's closest to Cormac McCarthy's real life. It's also Cormac McCarthy's longest novel, and for those who, like me, love his work, this is an absolute treat. So if you've read a couple of his other novels, consider picking this one up. I wouldn't recommend starting with it though. Surprisingly, there was only one mention of all the pretty horses. The Crossing is the second book in the trilogy, though the first two installments, All the Pretty Horses and The Crossing, you can read out of order. So if you're interested in The Crossing, which is a beautiful rambling novel that starts off with the main character trapping this big wolf and taking it across the border into Mexico, you can check this out in isolation. The trilogy ends with Cities of the Plain, which is still my personal favorite Cormac McCarthy novel, though I'm sure that that'll change over time for me. Okay, that's it for the honorable mentions. Now for the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead, which won the Pulitzer Prize. I have read this one, and I would recommend starting with it if you haven't read anything by him, though he's super prolific. He puts out like almost a book a year, so maybe instead of just taking my recommendation, if you wanna take a closer look at everything that he's written, just read the descriptions. You'll be able to figure out which one sounds the most intriguing to you. The Nickel Boys had about seven total votes and the number one novel on the list had over three dozen, including DMs of people recommending it to me, which by the way, are factored in. It wasn't exclusively the poll. Number nine on the list was The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I've said a lot about in other videos, so I'm going to keep it brief here. This is the book that essentially started the dark academia sub-genre, and you will love this, especially if sadness is your thing. It's a psychological thriller, and the cast of characters is really tight, very well constructed. The plot is propulsive, and it had me hooked from the first page didn't let up the entire way through. I read it in less than a week. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was number eight on the list, and I haven't read it, don't know too much about it. I've seen a lot of posts about it. I've seen it on the hashtag book talk table at Barnes & Noble quite often. I may get around to it eventually, but I honestly don't have much else to offer other than that it got a lot of votes, so a lot of people do really seem to like it. Number seven on the list was Circe by Madeline Miller, which I also haven't read, though it is on my list. I probably should get to that sooner rather than later because the amount of times I've seen that book mentioned. <sighs> Number six was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. That's in the mail. It's on the way to me right now. Too many people that I respect have said too many good things about that novel, and it's a shame that I haven't read it. So. You'll be hearing more about that one soon. Number five on the list is the greatest novel I've ever read in my life, although I didn't enjoy most of it. It's a brutal read, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. It's easily his best work, and if you haven't read it yet, you should check it out. It's set in the American West, and essentially it follows a group of people who are scalping Native Americans, I believe primarily Apaches. Not sure if the Comanches are in there as well. I feel like I always, think of the Comanches because Empire of the Summer Moon is always top of mind, but I digress. The biggest influence on this novel seems to be Moby Dick by Herman Melville, although there's, I'm sure, a lot of other influences that I'm not aware of. The Old Testament certainly factored in here as well. If you're looking for a great classic that's an absolute knockout punch, go with this. 
Number four on the list was A Little Life, which I have intentionally not read because everyone who has reported back to me about that one has said that they loved it, but that it also sent them into a deep spiral of depression and sadness. And it's also really long. I don't have the time right now to dedicate myself to that and potentially wreck myself for sequential weeks. So I'll get to it eventually, but not with any sense of urgency. If you've read A Little Life, please leave some more detail about that one in the comments. I would love for there to be a bit more context about that one here. The third book on the list was one that I expected to receive fewer votes than it did. I was surprised that it got more than 15. Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky was number three. This is about a guy who thinks that he can get away with murder and live with himself. That's the crime, is murder. And the punishment is that he, in fact, cannot live with himself after he's committed murder. And this book induced one of the most horrible nightmares I've ever had in my life. I made a separate video about that if you'd like to see some more detail. Uh, read this one at your own risk. Number two on the list completely surprised me. I didn't understand until I started these accounts, this YouTube channel, my Instagram, and my TikTok, how much people like East of Eden by John Steinbeck. That was number two. I had always heard the most about The Grapes of Wrath. I've read Of Mice and Men, loved it. Read The Pearl, loved it. Read Cannery Row, loved that too. But East of Eden, people just keep saying good things about. So I'll probably have to get around to that in the near future. Enough of you have recommended it to me. I'll be on it. And the number one book on the list, which is the book that I'm reading right now, I'm not that far into it at the moment, but I'm sure I'll crush it within the next week. This one, people really started to DM me about after I put out Fumes, because I guess Fumes, the subject matter in it, reminded them of this, and they were curious if I'd read it. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. In the polls that I ran, it got over 20 votes, and like I said, a bunch of people have DM'd me about it separately. This novel is set in Southern Appalachia. It deals with a lot of really pressing issues of our times, including chiefly, but not limited to the opioid crisis. And the title is a reference to David Copperfield, which is a Charles Dickens novel. And there's a quote at the beginning of the novel from David Copperfield. This novel won the Pulitzer Prize. I hear for good reason. I'm loving what I've read so far and I'm positive I'll be talking about this one more soon. That's it. That's the list. Thank you for bearing with me through all of that and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll be making book related content indefinitely here on this channel. Hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.